right, good morning, my friend. Welcome to the channel. Uh, welcome to Folsom and Canyon. Uh, I just began setting my tripod up there. I just lifted my banner. And uh, normally, or lately, I've been standing across the street there on that corner. Uh, I originally stood here, actually around the corner just a little bit. But uh, when I walked to the mailbox to uh, get our church mail, uh, I saw myself standing here. So I thought, okay, I'll stand here until they kick me off <laughs> or whatever. So uh, praise God. Let's set this down and I uh, just want to say hello. So hello, God bless you. And uh, we'll, uh, that's my banner right there. Uh, you can see I'm looking uh, directly at the traffic as it comes my way. So that's a good thing. And, uh, let me put this down and uh, get the camera set up. Let's get started on our scripture shorts. And then after that, our street sermon. All right, see you in a few moments. morning I'm right on the street here right on the highway so uh, I was a little nervous about walking over because of the traffic but uh, anyways uh, let's pray Lord I thank you that we can come out to a shady place today that's, that's nice I like that uh, kind of keeps us cool because it will be hot today and uh, we get to uh, lift a banner like we did just a few moments ago uh, we get to uh, uh, do a sermon uh, to preach out the Word of God. Uh, we even get to do something short, those little 60 second things, those are kind of cool. Um, we also get to do a class. I thank the Lord for allowing me to do that class in the mornings. That was wonderful. And uh, I thank you, Lord, for giving me a hat and a shirt and some cones and a tripod and I just uh, the Word of God. And you've just provided so much uh, to me. I just want to keep giving everything out, giving it out and giving it out, Lord. Uh, I don't want to be something that, uh, or someone that just, uh, hoards everything. Uh, I don't hoard anything. I just uh, kind of live a, a very minimal type life. Uh, if it comes in, uh, I pray, Lord, uh, you show me where to put it. <laughs> and uh, so I thank you, Lord, that you had me put my camera here and you'll have my banner put here at this corner instead of the other corner where it gets really hot. <laughs> and uh, so, Lord, I thank you for Folsom Canyon today. And I thank you for what you're gonna be doing even now for the next several hours. In your name, Jesus, we humbly pray. Amen. Amen. So praise God. Uh, Sunday prayer letter. We preach our sermons from our Sunday prayer letter. Our Sunday prayer letter comes out every Sunday morning. I write it Saturday afternoon, Saturday evening. Uh, Saturdays are my day off from the banner, from the street. That's uh, my Sabbath rest in the Lord Jesus Christ. And... Uh, that day has become an incredibly amazing, awesome, I mean, you can just stack the adjectives <laughs> a day. It's just been incredible. Uh, I started that the first Friday, the very first Friday, uh, the, uh, when I came to Boulder in 2017, that was uh, May 3rd, 2017. Uh, that was on a Wednesday. And on Friday morning, the Lord uh, said, uh, tomorrow, I want you to set that day aside to rest in me, spend the day with me. And I said, yes, sir, that sounds cool. I never done that before. And uh, I knew he was talking about the Sabbath, Saturday, Sabbath. And uh, so that was the very first time in my entire life, being with the Lord, setting a special day aside just for God. Not for anything to do, not to go play, not to, not to, not to work of any kind, just to spend time with him. And he called it rest in him. In him, rest 
in the Lord Jesus Christ. Just, you know, however he said that. And that's what uh, I needed, but I didn't know that I needed it two years from then. About two years. Yeah, two years, 17, 19, yeah, two years and uh, a couple weeks. Because it was May uh, 26, 2019, that I began banner preaching. And I needed a Saturday off. I didn't know that. God knows the future. Understand that. Uh, God doesn't know just one or two years in advance. He knows all the way. There's nothing in the future that God doesn't know about. In fact, future doesn't even exist. After eternity begins and all what you see here is all changed into that new heaven and the new earth and all that stuff and the reign of Christ and, and everything's taken out and the, all that stuff we know in Revelation is done, then uh, uh, there won't be a future. Uh, the future and the present and the past, it's all kind of like right now. <laughs> and we can live that way, sort of. Not exactly, but something like that. And uh, uh, so I take that day off. And then uh, I write the letter. When I started writing that letter in 2018, actually, I started writing that in, in 2018. And it wasn't a Sunday prayer letter then, it was a scripture discourse. And if you listen to my show, my class this morning, I said uh, something like, uh, uh, because I began to pray the scriptures in my spirit, with my, using my spirit language to read and pray the scriptures, uh, that completely changed my vision into the Word of God. It's like I saw the Word of God differently than ever before. And uh, from there forward, the Lord started, had me writing the Scripture Discourse, and that's how I would do it. That's how I began writing. I would do that Sunday, the True Study. I was called a little different then, but it was something like that. And because uh, I've been praying that prayer and that type of work for, you know, since uh, Tristan Trade Towers, 9-11 and 2001, or whatever year that was. And uh, uh, so that's kind of a long time. And uh, so when I started, when the Holy Spirit added reading the scripture with my spirit, or praying the scripture with my spirit, not reading it, but praying it with my spirit, uh, that gave me an understanding that was uh, beyond my ability. And then the Holy Spirit had me sit down and begin writing scripture discourses. And I would write commentaries on the scriptures. I wrote dozens and dozens of them. Never done that before. Never could do that before. Didn't wasn't smart enough. <laughs> couldn't do it. Mentally, mentally, I couldn't do it. And then a little after that, we started our Sunday prayer letter. That scripture discourse uh, evolved into the, uh, or changed, or however you want to use what word. I mean, became the Sunday prayer letter that we use today that I'm going to preach from. See, your whole, it's just, and remember how the Lord works in your life. Don't just live your life and forget about yesterday. Think about how God is moving in your life. And always be thinking about that. Always be talking to God about your life, okay? So this letter here is called, uh, that's right here in my book. If you're on the class, you saw this. The Greeks believed, that's Acts chapter 14, verse 1. We're in Acts all 14 all week long. We're also in the theme, signs, wonders, miracles, praise, worship. And this is Wednesday, part four, Acts 14, verse 13 through 15. Praise the Lord. Verse 13 through 15. It's been a while since I stood here because that traffic is coming directly at me. See that truck was, I mean, right at me. So when I lift my banner, but the reason I had to move across the street is because there's a big old monstrous branch that hung way down to right about my eye level. And it just covered this whole area. So I had to move. But guess what? Uh, they cut it down. As I pray, Lord, we need to move that branch. There's, this is the third location. I've had three locations that I've said, Lord, well, we have to move that branch. That branch has got to come down. And there it is, it's down, it's no longer there. I've never seen a trim like this in all the years I've lived here. Pretty amazing. I mean, I believe my prayers, but I don't just pray something off the top of my head. I wait upon the Lord. 
I delight myself in the Lord. He gives me the desires of my heart to pray that tree limb to be cut. I commit it back to God, and I just trust in the Lord, praising and delighting in Him constantly. Then one day, I come over here, and it's, it's gone. Wow, praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Acts 14, verse 13. I'll read this, and we'll talk about it. Then the priest of Jupiter, then the priest of Jupiter, huh, crazy name, right? The priest of Jupiter. Uh, obviously, that is not a priest of uh, God. The priest of Jupiter, which was before their city, brought oxen and garlands unto the gates and would have done sacrifice with the people, which when the apostles, Barnabas and Paul, heard of the, heard they, heard of they, rent their clothes and ran in among the people, crying out and saying, Sirs, why do ye these things? We also are men of like passions with you and preach unto you that ye should turn from these vanities unto the living God, which made heaven and earth and the sea and all things that are therein, that are therein. Thank you, Lord, for the reading of your word. <clears throat> I'm kind of looking around. It's kind of busy, you know. Uh, it looks like I'm having to move my hours to 11 to 3, uh, move everything back an hour because of the class. Cause it's about 10.45 when I got out here, 10.40, 10.35. And uh, anyways, uh, so it's busy time of the morning. All right. Uh, then the priest of Jupiter. So, so Satan has his own priest. Understand that. Satan knows exactly how to structure his kingdom, his reign, his God, you know, throne, whatever you want to call it, the seat of Satan. He knows how to structure everything. And uh, understand that Satan is one angel, and he can only be in one place at one time. He's not a god. He's the kind of the ruler or the god of this world, the Bible calls him. But uh, he's also called the red dragon, the deceiver, the accuser of the brethren, Satan, the devil, and all kinds of things. He had another name up in heaven. Hey, there's my bus over there. Uh, that's the bus that tomorrow I'm going to be on. I'm going to be up there in Loveland, Colorado. So when I finish my class, at, uh, I'll have to finish probably five minutes early. And then I've got to race out the door and uh, go about four, five, six blocks and catch that bus there that takes me on up to uh, Loveland, Colorado. It's about an hour ride or whatever it is. And uh, yeah, about an hour. And uh, <laughs> about that, right? I'm gonna do the class, <laughs> finish the class, run out the door. I gotta be ready before I do the class. I gotta be ready to go the moment I'm done with the class because I don't have time to get ready after the class. So that means I have to get ready before the class, do the class, head out the door, get on the bus, go all the way up to Loveland, preach all day, then in that after, late afternoon, get back on the bus, come on down, work on the video, work on the uh, scripture shorts, work on the podcast, work on, <laughs> work in preparing a uh, Friday's class. <laughs> and then people want to take my time. Uh, they don't understand. A lot of people just lay around and do nothing for God. A lot of people don't know that, but they don't. They do very little. I know a lot of people who don't work and they just want to take my time. I know a lot of people who have odd jobs and uh, a lot of people who are retired and uh, all they want to do is uh, take from people uh, from, uh, who are busy. Because what do you do when you want something done? Do you give it to somebody who's laying around on the couch with their feet up? Do you give that person the job to do? Because, well, he's got time to go do that job. No, you don't give that person the job to do because they'll never do it. You give the work to somebody who's busy, working. They know how to structure their time. They know how to run a calendar. They know how to, uh, they know, they're aware of timing, timing. They're aware of appointments. They're aware of how they move through their day. And they can restructure some of their appointments and get that job done. That's why God gives us, those who are busy, gives us extra jobs and extra things to do. It's not because we want to do it. Now we're trying to prove our love to God. We just are working. And God says, oh, I need you to do this too. Yes, sir. And they just, we just fit it into the schedule. You know, we just run along like next Wednesday. 
you know, or two weeks ago, the Lord said, I want you to start praying with Brent uh, on Boulder High School on Wednesdays, all right? I forgot about the class. I think it was before the class, actually. Maybe, no, I was thinking about the class, and it didn't, I didn't jive to me. I thought, well, but until this morning, when I woke up at 6 o'clock, oh, we're supposed to be praying at 6.30 around the school. I can't do that. So I need to get up a half hour, 45 minutes early, an hour early, I don't know, and uh, get ready so uh, Brent can come over half hour, 45 minutes early so we can go over to the uh, high school and pray. It takes about 30, 35 minutes to pray and then come back, jump in the seat and do the class. <laughs> How about that? Yeah. And uh, so God gives us, uh, so God gave me that job. Brent's been doing that for two years. I've never done it. I just, last Wednesday was my first time. This would have been my second time, but we didn't, I forgot to talk to Brent about it. But I'll do it next Wednesday. So God gave me that job because he knew, uh, even though I'm packed and scheduled out, I don't have any time in there, I don't tell God, Lord, I'm too busy. I, don't have, I can't do that. I just say, yes, sir, and I will fit it in the schedule somehow. You know? So if you're not being used of God, it's probably because you're not working. You're not working. You're just doing your whatever you're doing. And if you're not working, I pray that you get to work real soon because the time's that short. Not time to praise the Lord. I mean, I know there are, we do it, but we do it while we're working. It's not time to sit down and read the Bible. You can do that while you're moving. Uh, it's not time to go to Bible school. You can do that later. You can do on-the-job training like I did for five years. I didn't sit in a classroom for five years. Are you kidding me? I haven't got time to do that. To sit in a classroom and study for five years? Are you kidding me? <laughs> you know, I had to work. I had a family to feed. I had a job to do. I was working for 60, 70 hours a week on my job. I had to fit my schedule, my training, my ministry training, in amongst all the days I was home from the truck. That's why it took five years to do my schooling, my training in the ministry, you know? It's, that's how life is. You know, God gives busy people more to do. Because he knows, you know, that's why Paul was busy all the time, you know? Anyway, that's just hot on my tail, because be busy. Quit sitting around wondering what to do next. Then the priest of Jupiter, that's a priest of Satan, Jupiter, that's a sun, that's a, that's a planet that God created. He's a priest of that planet. Guess what? That's not true. He's not the priest of that planet. It's a devil, a ruling principality of some sort who took the name of Jupiter. How did he do that? I don't know. doesn't matter. So it was, that priest served not that planet called Jupiter. He served a devil, a fallen angel, very powerful one. A lot of authority, just like all of God's angels, all of the angels, Satan's angels and God's angels, they have different amounts of power and authority. Not all angels are the same. Not all devils are the same. Okay. So he was a priest of this uh, devil called Jupiter, which was before their city. Before their city. Was the priest before their city? Or was that devil before their city? That devil was. And that's why I'm out here on the street. I'm out on the street. <laughs> Gotta wait for the police. He waved first. Hallelujah for that. He's the, and he's driving in that pickup. That means he's a, some kind of a boss. Hallelujah, right? Praying for the police officers of our state. So are you praying for that devil that rules over? That's, here it says it's uh, before their city. He's standing before the city overshadowing that city with his darkness, with his evil. And he's got a priest serving that devil. And that priest down there, that man, is doing that devil's work, gathering other people to worship that devil. And what are you doing? What am I doing is I'm binding that devil. I'm, ta <laughs> I'm taking authority over that devil who's before the city of Boulder. And tomorrow I'll be praying over that devil that's before the city of Loveland. What are Christians doing? Oh, they're playing. They went and had breakfast and coffee, did their little Bible study, praise and worship while they're driving to work. Did they do any intercession and binding any devils? I doubt it. But they could have. I'm not saying every. I'm just picking and just talking. The reason I'm talking this way is because I just didn't start becoming a believer a couple days ago. 
I've been all over the church world for five decades, all over the church world, in all kinds of positions, everywhere, all over. And I've seen a lot. I'm very visual. I'm very uh, aware of my surroundings. I know what's going on all over, all the time. I'm just very aware. Always have been. That's why I was a good trucker. <laughs> I knew what was around my rig all the time. And uh, so I'm, I'm talking this way because I want believers to say, you know what we're going to do? We're going to do what Brent's been doing for two years over in Boulder High School, taking authority over that devil that's over that high school. That's what Brent's been doing. And so I pray, Lord, that you've added me to his prayer. Maybe there's something going on that you need two guys over there now, not just one. You need two guys. And I said, yes, Lord, I'll raise my hand. Use me, Lord. God sought for a man among the people and make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land so I wouldn't destroy it. And I found none. Ezekiel 22, 30. Found none. God looked and God says, I didn't find anybody. Not one person would raise their hand. Not one single person raised their hand. That's happening today in 2023 here in Boulder. We've asked many, many people to come out to the street, many, many people to help us pray, but no one has raised their hand. All the people are too busy doing whatever they're doing. So the reason I do these sermons is to encourage you that's probably already doing what I'm saying because you can relate to me and you're here. Otherwise, you'd be off and you'd you know, go the other direction. I'm not going to hear John. He's always yelling at me. <laughs> Get going. That you sense that fire because the time is at hand, that fire that's in my bones, and you go tell your family members, you go tell your friends, your church members and your church, say, hey, let's get to work for God. And you'd be surprised what many of them will say. Oh, we gotta play, uh, we gotta play poker tonight. We got, this is poker night. We gotta play Texas Hold'em tonight. Yeah, that's what churches are gonna do on Wednesday night. Oh, we gotta go out drinking beer tonight. Yeah, that's what Christians are gonna do tonight. You think that's not true, huh? think again it's because of this principality that is before their city right that's why Paul and Barnabas was in that city preaching against the, that principality with the Word of God all right and God says okay I need to do something else here because these guys are still asleep the Word of God's not I need to confirm the Word of God with some signs and miracles following the preaching so he healed this cripple we talked about yesterday. And that just lit up, lit everything up. That means that just, boom, it exploded. It exploded. Everything just exploded. Just like Lucy got healed. Last night, she got word from her doctor. She had breast cancer, stage four. I hear, I think that's pretty serious, stage four. I'm not sure, I don't know much about cancer, what stages they are. Stage four, breast cancer. My past, my uh, worship minister, from Bethel, his wife, 30 years old, died of breast cancer. It shocked our whole church. We were all praying for her. Why didn't she die? Because she didn't do what God told her to do. That's why she died. She didn't have to die. She didn't have to die. She had prophetic word to her on what do, to do. She knew in her heart what she was supposed to do, and she said no. She said no, I'm not gonna do that. She had three little kids, all about this big, like six years old, four years old, two years old. That's called disobedience. God tells you to go do something. You're like, better go do it. You know? I'm not gonna tell you what God told her to do. Everybody knew it in our church. It's not important right now. But she died. But Lucy, she's healed. Because why? Why did Lucy get healed? Because she did what God told her to do. Now she's healed, fully healed. No, no cancer. Cancer free, cancer free. How about that? What a testimony to Gospel Evangelist Church, to the men and women of our church, to the people who are praying, to the faith of the body of Christ, and to our God, who by his stripes you were healed. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And I rebuke all those people who say God doesn't heal anymore. I rebuke all those lying words from those so-called Christians. I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. I rebuke that because my wife would be dead today if I walked and believed in the church that I was going to, that in Spokane Valley Baptist Church. If I was going there 
and I believed and I walked in that bastard Baptist doctrine, my wife would have died and given childbirth to our child, Nicole. Because they point blank said, no, all that in the Bible is all done away with. It's all gone. It all ended when the last apostle died, is what they told us. We were shocked. We were shocked. I said, well, we can't come to church here anymore because that's in the Bible. Lo and behold, two years later, three years later, whatever it was, four years later, three or four years later, we had our child. And God did a miraculous healing in the hospital right before two or three doctors, between five or six nurses. I mean, red lights were glowing off, uh, code blue or whatever it was, sirens were going off. I mean, there was an emergency in the birthing room. It was my wife. I didn't know that. I was out in the hallway with the nurse and our daughter, Nicole. God says, go back in there, Nancy needs you. Yes, sir, wow, all right. I went back in there, I walked in the operating room or the room she was giving birth, and I said, oh, wow, this is a mess. I mean, I was, I was shocked. And God said, go over and lay your hand on her left shoulder and I'll heal her. I said, yes, sir, can you do it from here? <laughs> That's what I said, because there was blood going everywhere. There was blood pouring out of her like you can't believe. It's like a thermos bottle being poured blood everywhere. Every, the doctors were all covered in blood. It was a mess. And she was getting ready to go into a coma, being passed out because she was losing all of her blood. It was horrible, 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 horrible. That's how women die, giving childbirth. And so I went over there and the doctors, the, the, Nate, Nancy said to all the doctors, get John in here, call John in here and he'll, he'll lay hands on me and, and God will heal me. And she said to me later on that night, because uh, she didn't die, later on that night that uh, they all laughed out loud. They laughed out loud, she said. It just startled her of their total lack of belief in God. So I went in there and laid my hands on her, just like John said, lay your hand on your left shoulder and I'll heal her. So I laid my hand on her left shoulder, got a bunch of blood on me, laid my hands on her left shoulder, said, in the name of Jesus, you do stop bleeding. And when I said, stop bleeding in the name of Jesus, the doctor screamed out loud, the top of her lungs. It scared me. That <laughs> scared me. I jumped back. He said, stop. It stopped. The bleeding stopped. I mean, everybody was so utterly shocked that we had an instantaneous miracle right before all these people's eyes. And my wife did never had to leave that birthing room. They cleaned everything up, did all of her thing, put her in bed. And God healed her. I don't know what, how it happened because she must have had, it looked like three quarts of blood on the floor or a gallon of blood. I mean, it was like amazing. But they didn't give her any blood transfusion. What happened? I don't know. God healed her. God healed Nancy when she gave birth to Nicole back in 1984, September of 84. And Nicole will be, uh, as 84, so she'll be 39. Next month, 39, how about that? <laughs> She's a miracle child, so is Johnny. Johnny's a miracle child too. We have a, you know, another child that died, but that's okay. I mean, it's in heaven. It's a boy, girl, it's a girl. And I have two girls in heaven. They're not girls, but they were girls here. Up there. But just think about that for a moment, what I just said about Lucy and about Nancy and about the Word of God. Think, 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 think. Rethink your doctrines. Rethink your belief system. Rethink with the Holy Ghost and the Word of God your belief. Because there are too many believers in the world who do not believe of any of the signs, any of the miracles, any of the wonders that happened after the last apostle died. Millions, not just one or two, millions upon millions upon millions of believers believe that. How sad. That's how good Satan is. That's why I'm out here on the street. All right? Anyways, so that's why we're in the theme, signs, wonders, and miracles. I just hope you... Very important to me. Very, very important. Because, uh, I mean, I could tell you so many stories, just blow your socks off. 
One of the reasons my son became a Christian at about four years old was he saw a man who was crippled in a wheelchair when he was prayed over, jumped out of his wheelchair, his legs straightened up, and he was fully, completely healed right before my son's eyes. And he was just shocked. I said, Dad, that's the guy who was in that wheelchair. Yeah, how about that, Johnny? <laughs> Isn't that great? Have your child see somebody who was crippled leap out of that chair when the preacher said, be healed, or whatever he said. I don't know what he said. He leaped out of that wheelchair and his legs straightened up. Man, I tell you, that was a miracle right before everybody's eyes. A lot of miracles happened that day. I'm excited. <laughs> you should be. I'm excited. I'm excited, man. Be excited. Be turned on to the Word of God. Then the priest of Jupiter, that priest of that devil that, that is before their city here, brought oxen and garlands under the gates. Why did he bring oxen and garlands? Why? Because that devil is mimicking God. He brought an oxen to slay, to shed blood, to sprinkle blood, right? Blood. I don't know what garland means. I didn't look that up. Because that's what God told the priests of Moses and on down, to shed the blood for the remission of sin, that one day the Lamb of God will shed His blood forever. It'll be the perfect blood shed. It'll be God's blood. God's blood. Not, it wasn't Joseph's blood. I don't care what your Bible says. It wasn't, Joseph is not the dad, nor the father, the father of uh, Jesus. And Jesus is not adopted into the... Bibles that people read blows my mind. It was before their city, Brought oxen and garlands into the gates. Why did he take the gates? He went to the gates because that's where God gives offerings and sacrifices. Going to the gate of the city. That's why I'm here at this location. This is a type of gate. These are two major arteries and it becomes like a gate, a modern gate, not an old gate, but a modern gate. I try to go to the gates of, this, of where I'm at. I go into different areas and sections and regions of my city and other cities, okay? And I preach the word of God. I don't. You know, okay. Uh, would uh, enter the gates and would have done sacrifice with the people. Sacrifice with the oxen, right? With the oxen, ungodly. That's why people, believers, are so afraid of doing anything that is very radical, very visible. They just want to be really quiet, and they call themselves, well, I'm a conservative Christian. I don't get too excited. I don't raise my hands. I don't shout. I don't jump up and down. I don't dance before the Lord, and I'll surely never lay hands on somebody who is sick for they to be healed. And I'll surely, because I'm conservative, never cast a devil out of somebody because I'm a conservative Christian. Makes me want to throw up when I hear that. It's just sickening. Verse 14. Which when the apostles, Barnabas and Paul, heard of they, they got word. I mean, they weren't doing it in front of Paul and Barnabas. They got word. They went, they're out, they're out the gates. Paul and Barnabas wasn't out there. They were someplace else. They got home. And they ran over there and said, hey, 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 hey. Stop that. Don't do that. Anyways, he said, uh, they rent their clothes. That was something that, you know, they rip, they rent, to rip apart, to tear their clothes. You know, they rent and sackcloth and ashes, that type of thing. It's an outward sign of, of uh, commanding, repenting, and all that kind of stuff. We don't do that anymore, but we could if we wanted to, because it's in the New Testament here. Rent their clothes and ran, and ran, and ran, and ran. You get that? And they ran. And the Holy Ghost says, you better get started right now. You better lickety-split. Put your feet in motion and run. <laughs> because they're going to do it right now. And you don't want to be done right now. So they ran. R-A-N. Are you running after the devil? Huh? That's what David did. King David, he ran after Goliath. He ran after Goliath with a slingshot and slung that slingshot and killed that giant with one stone. When all the other believers 
were shaking in their boots and scared. Oh, oh, oh. They were scared of this one guy. So he was big. So what? David said, my God is bigger than you, and my God's going to take you down. And he ran. I walk fast. I can't run anymore, but I sure walk fast. I walk like I'm going someplace. I've got something to do. I've got some. I've got to get here. And I move fast. I'm trucking. I am, I'm traveling. Man, I'm going to get there. Are you just moseying along, just wondering what to do next? And... You know, you know, scratching your head, or are you running after the devil? I mean, I'm hot, man. Just, I mean, there's a time to relax. There's a time for everything. There's a time to have joy. There's a time to go to war. There's a time for peace. There's a time for everything. But you have to understand, what time are we in? Like right now, we're not in the time to go play. We're in the time to go to work. Oh, a bee got my lady's hair. <laughs> a lot of bees around here. Anyways, over there by the light. <laughs> All right, so here they, uh, they sacrifice uh, with and they uh, ran in among the people. Get out of my way, get on, go, go, go. Crying out. They weren't just running, they were crying out loud. Stop that, stop that, stop that. I mean, they were yelling as they were running. I mean, they, you know, God says, get going. And they got going. <clears throat> and, uh, all right, let me go down there. Crying out, crying out, saying, sir, sir, sirs, why do you do, why do you do these things? Why do you do these things? Why do you, what are you doing? <laughs> stop it, stop it, stop it. Quit that. Right now, halt. <laughs> That's what, you know, they're all excited because they had to get it stopped now. Why did they have to be so aggressive at that moment? Because there's a time to get aggressive. There's a time to get going. There's a time to shout. And there's a time to be quiet. But at this time, it wasn't time, oh, let's just uh, have lunch first and we'll just mosey over there. We'll mosey over there uh, when we finish lunch. Uh, but that would, if they would have done that, that, and here's why they had to do it, is because that sacrifice would have created a massive breach in the spirit and more devils would have come in that city and more devils that could have destroyed Paul and Barnabas' ministry for a while. You don't know what the devil could have done because he was trying to do something in a big, big way. And he, he saw an opportunity there and he was, the devil was trying to take after, take after. <laughs> trying to do it. That's why they ran and they shouted between the people. Amen, right? <clears throat> Sirs, why do you do these things? We also are men of like passions with you. We're just like you, man. We're nobody special. We're just like you. We worshiped the devil one time too. We were sinners, you know? But, uh, you know, we're just like you, man. We're nobody with passions with you and preach unto you. And here's what we're, but we've been preaching unto you. We've been preaching unto you that you should turn, repent. Turn means to repent. Repent means to turn, to stop doing what you've been doing. And here they wouldn't listen. They had no ears to hear. That's what you're seeing here. All the people had no ears to hear. All they heard, all they saw was a miracle that happened with the crippled man. And they forgot everything. They said, oh man, this is this is some magnificent two guys here. These are gods that came down to us. Maybe they've been praying to Satan to reveal uh, a god so they could see a real god. Maybe you know who knows what happened. All kinds of craziness happened. You know, people do that today. Today they're still doing it today. Not just here. Not just here. They do it today now. Man doesn't change. God doesn't change. Man's the same here as he is now. He was a sinner back then, going to hell, and he's a sinner now, going to hell, saved by the grace of God. Before Jesus, they had the blood covered for atonement, obeying the laws to keep yourself protected, and then the blood of the Lamb was poured, law was finished, grace came in, and now we're in grace, and if you mess up, you ask for God's forgiveness. And you've never been saved, you've never been saved, never been born again, 
confess Jesus Christ as your Savior and you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. You believe in your heart, confess with your mouth. Get into the Bible. Go find somebody who's a Christian, ask them to help you if you need be. Passion is through you and preach unto you that you should turn from these vanities, vanity sins, these flesh, ungodly sins that you guys are doing, turn away, repent from them. Unto and turn from what? You turn from Satan and you turn to God, the living God, the living God. And here they had to tell them who God was because they thought God was Satan. That's like out here. They believe God is dead, that Satan is their God. Some people don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. They believe in the Lord Satan. Yeah, yeah. Satan is their Lord, their boss. They're ruling God over their life, and they hail Satan. Just like these guys did. See, no difference. There, nothing's, nothing's changed. You know, nothing's changed. <laughs> Under the living God. And this is the living God, which made heaven, made earth, made the sea, and made all the things that are in heaven, all the things that are in earth, and all the things that are in the sea. Even you. Even me. Even that cop car. That police who looked out over at me. <laughs> The Boulder police, uh, sometimes they find me in a different location than normal because they kind of know every, where all my corners are. And, uh, you know, I've been over there for a while, quite a long time, uh, many, many months. And now I'm over here, which was where I was here, you know, for a couple, three years, I think, over here. And uh, you look by going, you kind of did a double take. <laughs> oh, yeah, I thought you were over there. Now you're over here. <laughs> so I happened to 28th and Pearl for several weeks. So I moved over there, too. <clears throat> all right so that's the God, living God we serve he made heaven earth and the sea and all the things therein isn't that amazing what a God we serve I mean what a God that we serve and who are we I mean we're like I mean who are we that God is mindful of us I mean to not praise and honor and glorify God when you awake in the morning and when you go to sleep at night and all through your day, you don't give glory to God for everything in your life as a believer. I mean, come on, wake up, wake up. Give God the glory. Have faith in God to give God the glory. The reason you don't give God to the glory is maybe you might be lacking in faith. I don't know, it's between you and God. Right. So let's pray. Lord, I thank you that we can come out to the corner. I'm going to keep looking forward here because all these cars are up. And I thank you, Lord, that we can pray. We can preach your word. We can uh, be a witness. We can be a light in all these souls' lives. Several thousand people will go by me today. I thank you, Lord. And I praise you, Lord, for this sermon and all the people. And all the people. All the people, Lord. All the people. And all the people said, Amen. <laughs> Amen. I can't hear anybody. <laughs> what would you say? <laughs> so, uh, tomorrow's Thursday, this Wednesday. So, uh, if you're in class, I'm doing a class from 7 in the morning to 8 in the morning. Uh, Boulder time. I've been getting on 2, 3, 4, 5 minutes early. I was on 5 minutes early. I was praising and worshiping the Lord before uh, the 8 o'clock or 7 o'clock hour. And, uh, Still trying to put the camera and the microphone together. That's kind of a mess still. I'm sorry about that, but I had to get started. And, uh, and then tomorrow after the class, uh, I head to uh, Loveland. Then on Friday, I'll be in Denver. And then tonight, Wednesday night, is our church. We have 6.30 early prayer out there, J Road, behind the Creek Orthodox Church, J 47th, I think, one of those streets there. And uh, you want to come to church you know get a hold of me and I'll give you the exact locations because it's still on private property in a large commercial barn and uh, there's an office in the barn there that is converted and built out really nice and uh, seats about you know somewhere between 30 and 50 people I don't know how many fit in there we've got chairs for about 30 plus people and, uh, 
All right, so that's it. God bless you, man. I love you very much. Take care.